Welcome back Grade 12s, you're with Helen, you're doing Life Sciences on Tenfold Live and we have of course our grateful thanks to deliver to Liberty who are in it with you and you don't only have to be listening today, you can also follow us on the at Mindset YouTube channel and you can pack all those apps, the Tenfold Live app and the Mindset app into your cell phone and you've got us for always and for keeps. We're looking at mistakes that your friends in matric last year made and that the examiner said, uh-uh, teachers, make sure that your matrix for the 2023 cohort do not make the same mistakes. And one of the things that came up was learners don't know how to apply the scientific method. Now remember that the scientific method is a way, one of the ways that scientists do science, all right? And you need to know about the scientific method. It's not the only way scientists do science, but it's the way that you have to learn about in grade 12. The scientific method always starts with an observation and very often it's linked to some kind of a research question. Gee, I wonder why that is happening or I wonder why this looks like that. And the observation leads you to build a hypothesis. Now, very often in a scientific investigation kind of question, the question asks you, what is the hypothesis? And remember that a hypothesis is never a question. It is always a statement. It must be testable. You must be able to do an investigation to test that statement. And it must be giving you a possible answer or outcome for your investigation or an answer to the question that you've asked. So if you are asked to look at this investigation and propose a hypothesis, make sure it's written as a statement Make sure that it is testable, that you can do an investigation and make sure that you pose some or propose some kind of answer to a research question. The next part of the scientific method is setting up the investigation itself, the experimental setup. And before you start saying, number one, do this, number two, do that, you have to identify your variables. And the variables are things that can change in an investigation, and they are likely to change the outcome of what you're going to measure in the investigation. So we have variables that we are going to control. And one variable that we are going to test. Our variables are going to sometimes be independent and those independent variables are the ones that we as investigators are controlling. The one that we are testing or measuring is our dependent variable. And when we represent these on a graph, we show the independent one on the x-axis and the dependent one that we are measuring, we show on the y-axis. And then we come to this concept called validity. VA, VA validity always has to do with variables, how we control our variables. And an investigation that doesn't have the variables controlled cannot be called a valid investigation. 
What else about the scientific method cause problems? In a scientific investigation, we very often, most often, have a control setup and an experimental setup. So, for example, our good old plant hormone questions from paper one, the clinostat, where we've got our uh, geotropism and phototropism, and we want to show how a plant reacts to a unidirectional stimulus. A clinostat has a little motor, and then it has a revolving table or a plate. It's almost like a little mini record player. This is going to revolve around if you switch on the motor. In one of these investigations, if you are going to remove the stimulus, for example, of gravity, you're going to turn this clinostat upwards, sideways, and it's going to rotate around. And little bean seeds or radish seeds, let's get another color here, that are growing on the table are going to constantly be revolving around. And so you've removed the force of gravity. That is the control. Where you've left the clinostat unrevolving, fixed in other words, we're going to see that our little shoots grow upwards and our little roots grow downwards. Here, there's no up or down because it's constantly revolving. And we're going to see those little shoots and roots growing in any direction. But here, where there is a force of gravity at play, we're going to see the shoots grow upwards and the roots grow down. You need to understand the difference between a control and the experiment. The experiment is where the variable that you are testing is going to be tested here. And here you are removing a stimulus with a control to see if that variable was controlled, what is going to happen. And so you can compare your results. That's the important thing about having a control. You can compare it to the experimental state. Also, part of our scientific method is interpreting results. And when we interpret results, very often the information is arranged in some kind of data table. So we see the different variables and very often we will have numbers in our data table that show the results. But it's quite difficult to note trends or changes in the result, the pattern of results from a table. So often we will draw a graph and from the graph, which is a picture of the relationship between the two variables, we'll be able to describe some kind of a trend or a pattern that's going on. Once we get to the end of our investigation, we have to go back to what our original hypothesis was. Remember, our hypothesis was a suggested answer to a research question. And now we've got to see, was our suggested answer, was our predicted answer correct or was it incorrect? And we've either got to accept our hypothesis or we've got to reject the hypothesis. And actually, it doesn't matter whether what you originally predicted is correct or what you originally predicted is incorrect. It doesn't matter. 
you've still done science. I like to say to my students, if your hypothesis is rejected, you've shown what is not the case instead of what is the case. And both ways, you've done good science. And finally, after testing your hypothesis, you come up with a conclusion. And your conclusion relates to the hypothesis and it talks about what information can you derive from this set of results. Make sure before you go into the exam that you understand all the parts of the scientific investigation and that you're able to work your way through a scientific investigation and finally at the end of the scientific investigation you're able to judge whether the investigation that you've just written about and studied is reliable or not reliable or you might have to show the examiner how it could be made more reliable and I teach my students reliability we repeat the investigation or we increase the sample size so reliability doesn't have to do with variables validity and variables reliability is how do i make sure that this wasn't just a chance freak set of results Every time this investigation is done, we're going to get the same results. That's reliability. If your bus comes at the same time every day, it's a reliable bus. So we repeat our investigation many times. Different people repeat it for us to make sure that we weren't the ones making the investigation correct. And we increase our sample size. If we see this set of results happening with five individuals, that's nice, but wouldn't it be more reliable if it happened with 10 sets of results? So if you say, my bus is always reliable, it comes at the same time every day, but that was only in five days, I think you'd only really say that your bus was reliable if it came every day of the week for the whole month and then you could say my bus came 20 times or 25 times this month at the right time. It's a very reliable bus service. And how could you make it even better? You could say that your friend is going to do the same investigation and you're going to repeat the investigation with his bus driver and his bus. And then you're not going to just do it for a week, you're going to do it for a whole month with 10 people's information. And if still that bus service is on time for 10 people over the whole month, then you can say, we are very, very sure that our bus is reliable. So reliability hasn't got to do with controlling variables, that is validity. Controlling variables, validity. Reliability, how many times can we get the same set of results if we repeat this investigation? And so it's very important that you not only are able to work your way through the scientific investigation, but that you're able to plot different kinds of graphs, such as your line graph. You're able to plot bar charts that have a space between the bars, and you know the difference between a bar chart and a histogram where there's no space between the bars because our independent variable is organized into ranges or classes and finally that you are able to recognize interpret and draw a pie chart from information you need in order to draw a pie chart 
you definitely need your calculator because you're going to have to calculate percentages and you're going to have to convert those percentages to degrees because a circle hasn't got 100 degrees, it's got 360 degrees. So you've got to be able to convert from percentage to degrees and you need your calculator for that. You also need your set of compasses to draw this very neat circle. Don't just go and do that in the exam. That's not going to get you points at all. And essential, you need a protractor that you can place down on a line and you can measure how many degrees to the next line. Those are essential for your life sciences. You must have a pen, you must have a pencil, you must have a ruler, and you must have your calculator, compasses, and protractor. Until next time, grade 12s, goodbye.